It's good to be here today with you, Cecily. I sent you a list of questions a few days ago so that you could program the answers into your device before I got here. So I thought to start the interview, we could begin with those questions. And then after we're done with those questions, we could have a random, fun, spontaneous conversation and just see where the day takes us. Is that okay with you? Yes, that's fine. What do you want the world to know about you? I want the world to know that I'm very fan loving very outgoing, and just a bit sassy LOL. Before I came here today, I messaged Cecily yesterday and I said I want to interview your mom with you so I can hear about all the trouble you got into growing up. Did she get into trouble growing up? She did! She told me she didn't! She did at one time. <laughs> she did at school, which is funny. Um, the school called me and told me that she said that her hand wasn't working to communicate and do her work at school. And I said, wow, really? And she's like, yeah. So I went to school and I went in there and I says, you know, is your hand not working? Uh, no. And I said, well, why did you tell them your hand wasn't working? Of course, like any child, she didn't want to do her work that day. Can you explain how you communicate? Yes, I would love to. My communication device is called a Dynavox and it's kind of like a mini laptop. I access it through a finger switch by tapping the switch with my right pointer finger. It has scan mode through different sections of buttons that let me select what I want. I have been using this device since I was three. So I find it pretty easy to navigate. This is my amazing dead Jerry. If you had to describe your daughter, what would you say? Oh man, uh, <laughs> I'd have to say just uh, an angel, you know. She's uh, definitely changed my life. How would you introduce yourself to a new person? I would introduce myself to a new person by letting them know my name and what kind of disability I have. What's your favorite thing about her? Uh, everything. I mean, she's, you know, she's gone so far in her life to, you know, let everybody know about her disability, you know, and she's a phenomenal person. Awesome. I couldn't ask for a better daughter. What is your disability? My disability is spinal muscular atopy. It's a rare genetic neuromuscular disease that affects the motor nerve cells with the spinal cord that impacts the muscles. It comes in four different types and I have type 1 which is the most severe. I got diagnosed with it when I was six months old. The doctor said that I wasn't supposed to live to see my first birthday. But with my faith in God and my loving family by my side, here I am today about to turn 26 and living my life to the fullest. Mom, how would you describe your daughter? <clears throat> wow. Um... Strong-willed, strong-willed, um, sassy, impatient, but I live for those days with her. Um, but I think the biggest thing is that she's a go-getter and she's very strong-willed and she won't give up and she keeps following those dreams. When somebody meets you for the first time, what do you hope they say? When someone meets me for the first time, I hope they say that they would love to get to know more about me and become friends with me. What's the most important thing for other people to know about your daughter? 
um, that she she is a person that she she's human just like everybody else. What are some of your favorite things to do? Some of my favorite things to do are social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Outdoor activities such as watch college softball, especially the Florida Gators, club boating and fishing, relaxing at the beach in a pool, vacations, and cocoa shopping. When at home I like to listen to music, get my nails done, watch movies, YouTube videos, especially square me and clubs, read books and magazines, play cards, board games, and lastly to take Snapchat pictures on my mom's phone. What are you most proud of Cecily for? Being her. You know, she's, uh... She... Oh man, I, it's... Everything. It's hard to put one perspective. She's she's everything. What is one of your biggest goals for the future? My biggest goal for the future is to have an actual relationship with a guy who will overlook my disability as being an obstacle and just love me for who I am as a person. I follow many intervaled couples on my social media accounts and I just love seeing their love stories. I'm a hopeless romantic and I just want to share that love and companionship with someone like my parents share with each other. I also would like to advocate and be an inspiration for others with disabilities like me. What's your favorite thing to do together? Movies. I guess girly time, shopping, spending money. We'll talk about like TV shows or cute guys or men, you know. She's all about that boys and stuff and we'll talk about that. Um, you know, she, like she says, she's, she loves to be, she would love to be in a relationship. So we talk about that a lot. What do you want someone to do if they see you in public? If someone sees me in public, I would want them to say hi to me and ask questions about my disability if they want to. Do people ever assume that your disability affects your intelligence? And if, it, if people do assume that, what would you say to them? Unfortunately, yes. But I would let people know that my disability only affects me physically, not mentally. What's the most important thing for others to know about Cecily? She's no different than you are. You know, she's got the same looks. She's got everything that you have. Um, she just has to work twice as hard to do what other people normally can do. When you're having a conversation, what do you hope others do as you're typing on your device? When I'm having a conversation with someone, I hope they just be patient with me and let me type out fully what I want to say. Is it okay if I ask you a few random questions right now? Yes, 
do people commonly give Cecily the chance and the opportunity and the time that she needs to properly communicate? No. No. You know, it's, um, I, I think it plays a lot in our role in the world today, you know. Um, our world's fast paced. Um, uh, people don't take the time and patience. When we're having a conversation, would it be helpful for me to ask questions that are close-ended, that might be like multiple choice, choice with yes and no options? Or do you prefer open-ended questions where you can express yourself? I prefer open-ended questions. Awesome. Thank you for telling me that. Why should people take the time? Respect. That's respect. I just think that's just, you know, respectful to give that person, you know, a chance to see who they are, you know, see what they want, see what their needs are. Um, and just all around, it just shows the respect and 
if you don't give that to them and you walk away, what is that doing to their ego? You know, what is that doing to them? How are they feeling? Can you talk a bit about why it's important for people to give everyone around them the time they need to communicate?
I think it's important to give people time to communicate cause you get to learn how they express themselves. I agree with you 100%. So do you find when you're meeting somebody for the first time, does a person typically give you the time that you need to express yourself? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
people usually don't. Is it okay for somebody to wait in silence for a few minutes while you type out your response? Yes, that's perfect. Is there anything else you want to say to the world?
Yes, I would like to say don't judge me based on my disability and how long it takes me to communicate cause my personality is very shiny and bright. Thank you, and that's very clear to see that you have a wonderful personality. If anybody would like to connect with you, I'm going to put your socials in the description below so people can reach out, connect with you, and be your friend. Thank you for having me today. This was absolutely wonderful.